All right. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to be doing this final recap for our Road to Emerald Challenge. Um, I had a kid just sneak in my room. <laughs> Close the door, love. So this last train was so, so good. I am literally saving the YouTube trainings for anyone on my team who says they want to work the business. I'm going to be like, here you go. Watch this and then let me know your takeaways. It was so, just power packed with information. And these ladies were solid in their sharing system, their retention system, and their, um, their business building system. And, and we hear that a lot, right? We hear that you got to have systems and this is it. These are those systems that we're talking about. So um, I could talk on and on. I took like 15 million notes, but I want to hear from you guys. What were your takeaways from this training? I'm like letting it get awkward. I'm gonna let it get awkward. <laughs> okay, let me get your wheels going about the um, the YouTubes because they were they were so good. So she talked about she talked about engagement, um, having one to two groups that you're working in, right, on Facebook. And to be really, really intentional with everything that we do. This is such a good reminder for me, being intentional when we're on Facebook, on social media in general. Um, and she was like, one to two groups that you are into. What are your passions? What's something that you could talk about for hours and hours? That's, that's a clue to you that this is something you should plug into. Um, so for example, mine is homeschooling. I could talk for hours and hours and hours with moms about homeschooling um, and, and homeschooling and parenting, which I feel like they're all in one. But um, <laughs> so, you know, so I love to be involved in homeschooling groups. So think about something you could just talk to people about. And did you guys know you could divide people into lists on Facebook to where you can click those lists I knew that like three years ago and I completely forgot. I went back to my Facebook and I had lists and I just have not used them. So that was such a great reminder for me. Oh yeah, use the lists because as people pop up, you can assign them to a list. So that way you can assign your team members to a list. So when you want to go and see what your team members are doing, you don't have to type in their name and find them. You just go to your list and boom, 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 you'll see their posts. And then your prospects and things like that. I totally forgot about that. So I was really thankful for that reminder. Uh, we've all heard wishing people happy birthday, right? That one's a great one. It's a great way to engage. It's a great way to offer samples. If you wanna offer samples to people, I know Rhonda and Mitzi have been doing that. Um, yep, 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 I have some other ones. Did you guys find those helpful? those tips for engagement. Hear me, Iris? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure with the headphones. Um, I was going to say, I used to do the friends list, but I can't seem to get it to work on the phone. So I kind of got away from it. Um, but I think now that I have a better computer, I might start doing that again because it just makes it simpler because you don't want to be on there forever. Yes. Yes. And even like, right, even right. making yourself go to a computer, setting a timer and that time on the computer is just to go through your lists. Be like, okay, I need to engage yeah. with my team. I need to engage with my prospects. I need to engage with my, you know, newbies. Um, yeah, that's a good point. It is difficult on the phone. And that's probably why I got away from it too, is because it's not easy on the phone. But yeah. Yeah, and that's something I'm in some groups, but I'm not consistent. Cause she was saying like two to three day, like commenting or posting. I had definitely have not done that. Um, 
And a couple other things that stuck out to me were, I just loved how they said it a few times, like you have to just be willing to do the work consistently. And there's like statistics that you will get there. <laughs> Cause sometimes, you know, it feels like, oh, nothing's happening. Right. Um, the other thing that stuck out was she said that um, like, as far as the business, um, it kind of, I think it was related with the follow-up. Like most people don't think they don't have the belief that they can do it. So it might not be necessarily that they're not interested, but they, they just can't imagine doing something like this. And, you know, if you think back, like I couldn't have imagined doing something like this either. And I know that my friend at the time spoke that belief into me. So yes, it kind of takes a little bit of scary just to think that it might just be that they're not, they don't know about it, that they don't believe in themselves. Yes. I am. I wrote that down too. Um, it's your job to pour belief into your builders. Don't assume that they know what they're doing. Like, don't just assume that just because they say they want to do the business that they know what they're doing. It's your job to pour that belief and give them guidance. And sometimes that can be overwhelming to me when I think, oh my goodness, I'm responsible for this person. No, that's not it. I'm not responsible for that person's success. I'm simply responsible to continually pour belief into them and encourage them. But then you kind of have to bless and release because what did she keep saying? She kept saying um, their mouth has to match their feet. So their words have to match their actions. And if they say, I want to work this, but they're not doing anything, then you need to have a different conversation. But you also need to just let them go through the process. I mean, my journey was so crazy in figuring out how I wanted to work this. Like at first I didn't want to work it. And for a year and a half, I just took the products and then I wanted to work it, but I wanted to do two multi-level marketing companies that I was in. I was going to do Plexus and doTERRA and I was going to do them right side by side. And then I like had to learn that you can't do that. <laughs> like, like there was so much I had to go through to figure out how to work network marketing. And so you know, love people enough to allow them to go through that process of making the mistakes um, and figuring it out. So that's always a good reminder for me because at first I'm like, I'm responsible for their success. No, no, no. I'm just responsible to be their biggest cheerleader and be like, you can do this. Now get busy. Here's some tools. Now use them, you know, but, um, but yeah, I loved that, that encouragement. Um, so one of the ones that stuck out to me was the retention system. Uh, retention is my weakest link. I can sign people up all day long. I do have a couple of bu business builders and I'm, I'm learning how to be a better, a better coach with business builders, but I'm like, what is my issue with retention? And I know that it's it's the harder work. Like I love talking to the people and I love signing people up. But when it comes to that retention, that kind of hand holding as they um, learn to love the products. And these statistics were so huge. Um, okay, where did I put it? Hold on. The people that, oh man, I wrote it down. There's people if you can get people to stay on the product for three months, 90 days, if you can get the people to stay on the product for 90 days, you have a 90% chance that they are lifers with Plexus. So that should be our goal. I was like, what? And they, cause corporate did all the math and they discovered that if somebody stays in the product for three months, they are 90% more likely to be a lifer with Plexus. And I'm like, that is huge. So I'm like, okay, refresh. That's my goal. Help people stay on the product for three months and get that wow. Get that, um, that those health successes going. Um, but again, retention, she talked about a system and she talked about, you know, your, your customer care starts after enrollment. Um, use a sponsor checklist. And I was, I was gonna print this out. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick because this was really helpful for me to find. You guys probably already know that this exists, but I wanted to look. That's not what I was looking for. 
Hold on just a second. Let me find it. Okay, it's in resource library. Recruiting, is it recruiting and onboarding? Let me look really quick and then I'll screen share and I'll show it to you. Okay. <clears throat> this pop up, oh good, that pops up in a different one. Okay, nope, that's not the checklist. New ambassador sponsor checklist, here we go. Okay, so let me, let me screen share really quick. Okay, so in the training center under resource library and under recruiting and onboarding, these tabs right here, up here. So you click recruit and onboard and you go down here and this is new ambassador sponsor checklist. Now they have a walk, a run and a sprint checklist. So you can kind of get an idea of where your person is. Are they just wanting to kind of try it out? Are they really interested in finding like fast results? <clears throat> and these are geared towards business building. So, but I think it can still be definitely used. Sorry, I lost where it went. Let me just click it again. So it's, it's literally a checklist for you days one through two what you're supposed to do getting started connect with your ambassador to discuss their health goals watch the why plexus with dr logan join plexus ambassador facebook community like this is what you're supposed to do days one through two then three through seven watch the microbiome video fill out goals on the live it love it track it tra track it tracker watch about plexus perks video so walk through this with them and this is just the this is just the slow pace, the walk pace, but it's all right right here. Go ahead. Did somebody say something? Did I miss it? Okay, maybe not. Um, Might have been me. Thought I was muted. Sorry. That's okay. So you can have there's a walk, there's a there's a run. So this kind of picks up the pace a little bit. You're gonna do things day one you're going to introduction and get connected day two you're going to get started with a product introduction so all of this is a checklist for you this is what we should be walking our people through and so plexus has the system because i don't re i don't remember if you guys re remember when they were um when she was talking about uh, the checklist and she was like it's in our team page and i'm like i don't have access to their team page <laughs> But then I was like, no, wait a second, we have this, we have this system and it's right there in our virtual office. And you might, you know, take that checklist and tweak it a little bit if it needs, if you have like a video you like to share or some questions you like to ask, but use that template, like it's there. And I'm so excited about it because when I found that I was like, here it is, I knew it was here. I knew they had a checklist for new ambassadors. And that re that's like so exciting for me for retention because I'm like, okay, I'm so bad at retention and I want to get better at this. So that retention system is so, um, yeah, so encouraging. So I wanted to show that to you guys. because I was thrilled that I found it. So I was so excited. <laughs> um, okay. Also, this was so good for me um, because I, I am extremely positive. So I am always, you know, happy go lucky and positive that sometimes I think I can oversell things. And she said, don't oversell it. Um, your, your relationship depends on how your, the relationship that the person's going to have with you and with Plexus is going to be dependent on how you sell it. It's not a quick fix. And I usually tell people that, but I don't really say, um, okay, you're going to need to give this 60 to 90 days. And I'm going to start just saying 90 days. Like this is going to be, because that's the statistic, right? If we can get them to stay on the product for three months, they're 90% more likely to stick with it. So, um, and I loved her example of breaking a bone. If you break a bone, it takes minimum to, um, 
and take six weeks minimum in a cast to heal. And you're not like watching it heal. You can't even see it healing. You're not even knowing what it's doing underneath there. But it takes six weeks minimum. And that's kind of how our gut health is too. Like you, you need 90 days to start noticing that difference. You're not going to see it right away. You're not going to necessarily get to watch and go, oh, look, it's changing. I just loved that analogy. And I'm like, oh, I want to use that. There we go. Mitzi's got her interpreter on. Yay. Okay. Um, but I want to use that analogy of a broken bone and tell them and, and use that for retention and tell them just like a broken bone has to sit in a cast for six weeks at least, sometimes longer, this is where you're going to have that root healing is in that, that 90 days. Um, but I loved, I loved all the information on retention. Um, let's see. Anybody else have comments on that? Um, I also loved the, um, so she was like, you need to check on one active and one inactive ambassador a day at least. Um, if you have more people, check on more. Um, don't, don't assume that no news is good news. Like you've got to check on your people there. And it's so true. They're not going to tell you that they're having an awful time. They're not going to tell you that they're forgetting to take their products. They're not going to tell you that they don't like the taste of slim. You're going to have to actively ask them. And I have found this to be true over and over and over again, where it's like, I have to pull information out of people where I'm like, Hey, how things are going? Oh, they're okay. You know, sometimes I forget to take my product and sometimes I'm the, and then it comes to find out that they, they hate the way that slim tastes. And you're like, why, why didn't you just tell me? <laughs> and it's so frustrating. So, um, You've got to help them love their products. You've got to help them walk through that. And so as soon as we get a new customer, and this, I'm so bad about thinking that, oh, good, no news is good news. I think that they're liking everything. Um, and I'm not doing that continual follow-up. So this was just the breakdown was such a good, uh, such a good reminder. And again, it can be overwhelming to think about the checklist of all the things that we have to do. But remember that she said, you can get these things done if you do a little bit every single day. Just think about it. Think about how much time you spent really working, following up, prospecting, checking in on your team. Those three things, super, super important. How much time did you really spend two weeks ago on that? And if you just did one hour every single day, maybe two hours every single day, you're looking at, you know, I, I usually try to take Sundays off, but you're looking at, you know, 10 to 11 hours a week. And that's a lot of time. You can break that up and remember just like a little bit at a time. And I always tell myself, um, because I feel like I have to do it all in one day. I have to check on all my people in one day. Um, but if I just check on five, that's five more than I checked on yesterday. If I just check on five more, that's five more that I didn't check on two days ago. So it's just these little tiny steps to continually get things moving into a cycle. And like she said, it's like pushing a snowball uphill. The more you push and the more you get to the top, it's harder and harder and harder. But your goal is to get your team and your business builders to the point where you're at the top of the mountain and you can let it roll down because it works itself because everybody's following up with each other and following up with the team and you know prospecting the same way and duplication. So I was like, that's right. We're doing the hard work. We're doing the really hard work. And we're training everybody, just like our kids, right? We're training them how to fold laundry and do the dishes and all those things. And when they're little, it's really hard. But then as they get older, you're like, oh, they're doing it. <laughs> so I don't know. That was all just really, really encouraging to me. Um, Mitzi just said, one thing that was repeated often during the Shine Convention that stuck with me is they want to be seen, they want to be heard. We need to show them that we value them. So it's important that we check in on them often. Yes, I agree. 
Um, I really agree with that, Mitzi, because yeah, a lot of times, and remember that when people have complaints too, a lot of times it's not, it's not about us at all. Some people just want to be heard. And so that listening ear and being really patient and then, you know, some gentle guidance that goes a long way, but I agree. People want to be seen and that's important. Um, good point. Uh, I, I feel like I, I haven't even jumped into the business builder, my business builder, like y'all look at my notes. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I kept writing notes, but does anybody have anything to, else to share? Just like jump in. I just will keep talking. I have a quick question. Just, yeah. I was just curious. Um, like if you've made lots of efforts to start them off well, but they're just not responsive or you can't get them on the phone, you know, you'll, I always kind of have this thinking feeling like, oh, you know, <laughs> because you know, like if they're not communicating, but I don't know, just their ideas to encourage them and besides, you know, putting them in the groups. I um, mean, also the second question is, you know, if people have found the three way chats to be effective. I used to do those a lot more yeah. earlier. Haven't as much lately. Yeah. Partly because I'm on the phone. <laughs> um, I'll share my, my two cents on that. And if anybody else has any input on that. Um, so helping them, sorry, my brain just went dead. Okay. So when they don't respond and you've like done everything you can to start them off right. Um, it's one of those things that we can't force anybody to respond. And it's just this continual, you just drip on them. They go put them into like a once a month reminder system to where you're just like, hey, I saw this uh, testimony and I thought of you. Hey, how are you doing? Um, you know, hey, I noticed that you ordered, you know, ProBio 5. Have you been, is, do you find that it's better you take it at night or take it at day? Asking good questions and sharing testimonies, that's, that's all you can do. And just know, like rest in the fact that you are doing all the right things and now it's in their court. Like you can't make them, you know, you can't make them do the things that they need to do. So you are, and and I think people really appreciate that. I've seen, I've heard so many diamond documentaries that are just like, I'm so glad my sponsor didn't give up on me. I'm so glad my sponsor kept showing up. I'm so glad I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be living the life I'm living. Like they, all those phrases keep coming. And that's, that should be like your biggest cheerleader. You are loving them enough to keep dripping on them and not worry about them not responding. And it's hard to do because I get in that too. I'm like, seriously, just one word it takes three seconds to say one word to me. <laughs> Go ahead, Mitzi. I can't hear your interpreter. Hi, yes. So a couple of things that I learned uh, from two of the diamond uh, masters ambassadors ambassadors one of them whose name was Bridget last name was Ryan Bridget said one time she contacted all of her non-active customers and And let them know she was thinking about them. Her connection is not great. Contact list. That's something that I can do. There's no problem there. And I'll take you off if that's something that you would prefer. So immediately people responded and they said, no, I'm so sorry that I didn't respond. So she finally started to get some folks attention by saying that she let them know that her time is valuable, mm -hmm. you know, and she also showed them that they are valuable to her as well. You know, that she sees value in them, that 
it's not just about them being interested in the product and in the business, but also being interested in their life and who they are as people and how they're doing. So the fact that, you know, she offered to take them on the list really got their attention. So now a lot of the diamond ambassadors and, and one specifically named Chris, actually, I believe it's Christina last name is William. Yes. Um, so Chris, I think that was her anyway. She had said one time she reached out to someone and said, Hi, you know, she had, she had sent them a gift or something that said, like, I know this looks funny, but, uh, you know, I don't want to scare you away when I try to talk to you about some of these business opportunities or about my products. Um, you know, I, I, I just really want to share this with you. I hope I didn't scare you away, but she sent it through a funny gift to try to lighten it up uh, um, and make the other person feel more comfortable and laugh. And those people that saw the gift and her and, and saw her comment were actually able to respond back and say, no, no, I'm sorry. I've just been busy lately. That's why I didn't respond. So she was able to finally get their attention and get their response. So those are a couple of examples that really stuck with me. And then that's something that I'll probably try myself. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that. Just that wording. If you've like followed up and followed up and followed up and saying, you know, if it's, if it, I'm bothering you, I definitely don't want to be a bother. I can take you off my reminder list. That often gets people's attention really well. And I've used the gift thing too. Um, it's the one where um, Forrest Gump is running and he's like running away and he turns the corner. And so you share that and be like, uh, did I scare you away? I didn't mean to scare you away. And people respond to that. And it's just being it's just being totally real. It's being like, hey, did I totally scare you away? Because that was not my intention. And just being yourself and being real and being a little funny, making people laugh. I love that. Yeah, I love that. It's it's a great way to just lighten things up. Um, totally. I also loved her, her comments on um, being totally upfront when, with people when you when you're going to share the products with them or the business with them say hey um you know i've loved chatting with you and i love following your facebook i just want you to know i'm messaging right now because i keep thinking that maybe you would like to take a look at my product or i keep thinking about you with the business and i just wanted to tell you right away this is why i'm messaging today and and to just be totally upfront and not um not vague that's what, and she said it so well. She's like, that's what people hate. People hate like these vague messages about being sold to or a business opportunity. But if you're just upfront, you know, they can say, oh yeah, no, thank you. And usually people do guys, usually people have great kind responses. So, um, so yeah, I love just, you know, being totally upfront in your message with people. Um, I think is, I think that was a great tip. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, let me jump really quick into the business builders. That last video, um, she talked about, so business, this was so good guys. Business builders are product lovers. And I love the fact that she said business builders are not found. They are made. You make business builders. And I was like, yes, this is it. You don't just happen upon somebody sometimes it happens and we all know that right sometimes you share with somebody and they're like this is it i'm taking off and you hear those stories where people are like oh man there was a business opportunity i looked at the compensation plan and boom i was ready i took off i started sharing with everybody um but nine times out of ten business builders are made and business builders come from product lovers and so i I, so example, I have a cat who just signed up yesterday. I have been working on her for two years. Uh, she has been coming to me, asking me information for her daughter who has horrible skin issues. She's finally, she's gone to natural paths and Western doctors and all the things. And she's finally giving in and going to try this. And she's like, if this works, I'm sharing. If this works, I'm sharing. If it works. And I was like, Jordan, you share with three people in the next 30 days, you can get $400. And she's like, okay, hang on. I've got a few people I can share with. <laughs> and so she's giving me people you can share with. And it's like, she's, I know she's going to love the product. 
And so it's helping her realize she can share and, and guiding her because she's already got it in her head. If this works, I'm totally doing this because she's tried so many other things. So now it's like, okay, but get that into her head. Do it now. Start sharing now and the products will work. So, uh, but I love that business builders are product lovers and they're not found, they're made. Nope, not yet. You can wait till I'm done. Thank you, love. Um, I talked about the snowball. Uh, it says connect with one active business builder. People won't know what to do if you don't tell them. Um, so even like we said, even if somebody says they want to be a builder, they're not going to get that. They're not always going to know exactly what to do. So make sure you're connecting with them. Um, we already talked about it's your job to pour belief into them. Don't assume they know what they're doing. So get this, I, I don't, did you guys hear this part? Um, they, she said that there was a huge gathering of network marketers, like industry-wide network marketers from all over the place. And there was like a huge panel of the top earners of network marketers worldwide. And they said, how many people have you personally signed up yourself? And the average is 100. The average is 100 people on their first line. And then the question was, how many of your one-liners make you the most money? And they said two to three. These are people making millions of dollars in network marketing. On average, they sign up 100 people on their first line. And the people that make them the most money are two to three people. That's huge. So it was also very encouraging. It's, that's not huge numbers. This is the beauty of network marketing. This is the beauty of rolling that snowball up the hill and getting it to the top to where it rolls down on its own. Um, so I thought that was really eye-opening for me. Yeah, go ahead, Mitzi. I don't know why. Rhonda, can your interpreter hear me? Yes, this is the interpreter. I can hear you. I noticed... Hold on just a second. I noticed if your interpreter is a little bit choppy, she's voicing for you. I don't know. It, maybe it's her connection. She's trying to get that. Um, can she hear now? She can't hear. I don't know. I don't know. She can hear now. Okay. So maybe it was just a glitch. <clears throat> the other thing was um, do three-way calls with all your level twos. I thought that was so great. And she said, help your workers get workers. And so make sure you do three-way calls with all your level twos. So encourage your workers, your level ones to put you in three-way calls and then they, just like people learn how to talk about the product, they learn how to talk about the business. Um, and if you don't know how to talk about the business, if you feel stuck talking about it, guys, those um, welcome to Plexus videos that corporate is doing and the, those uh, training videos that they're doing, plug people in. I have been trying to plug into those more and more and they are great. And we've been plugging in as a team. We'll just watch together. We'll watch a Welcome to Plexus video uh, um, event that corporate puts on together. And it's so good. And they talk about the business. And the jewel that is uh, sharing will talk about the business. Um, and I love the fact that you can learn what to say. This business is completely learnable for anyone. If you don't know what to say, you can learn what to say uh, and take that time to invest in it. She, she said she didn't know what to say for the first, um, first, you know, first year she was doing stuff and she found a really good video that she loved and she memorized it. She's like, I wrote that thing down and I just regurgitated what the video said. And she's like, everyone thought I was so smart and I wasn't, none of it was my own, you know, my own words. She's like, and then I got to a point where I didn't have to, you know, have the paper in front of me. It just came natural. 
Um, so anyway, guys, that's mainly what I had. I I loved. I, I loved all the information. I'm probably going to watch those three videos again um, several times just to kind of get into my head what you've got to do. Um, and she said oftentimes when she's talking to her level ones who want to build but aren't doing things, she makes sure that she shuts up, simply asks questions and listens to them. And she said nine times out of 10, it comes down to fear. So you can find out why your level ones are scared to share. Guys, I'm scared to share. I've been in this business for, this is my seventh year that I'll hit in August. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm still scared to share and scared of that rejection. You never get unscared of that, but you become brave, right? We're not fearless, we're just brave. <laughs> so um, it's, it's important to remember that, that you just, that rejection never goes away, that fear of rejection, but you just become brave and you learn to love the people more than you fear the rejection. Um, and you, and that's, that's something that you just have to keep in your mind. How much do I care about this person? And think about yourself. I, I looked down on and judged my friend who shared with me and shared, she was sharing on Facebook and all this other stuff. I had such a poor attitude towards her. And now I'm like, man, I'm so glad she didn't give up on me. Man, I'm so glad she kept sharing. Cause if she hadn't kept sharing, if she had given into fear, I wouldn't be here today. So think about that and keep sharing. Um, and that's, that's one of my biggest takeaways from her videos. Like how much do you care about people? How much do you love them to put aside your own pride and your own fear and to go ahead and ask the question because they're going to say no. <laughs> like, and you know, that seven to 12 touch point, you've got to follow up with them. And she said, that's what is the difference between successful people and hobbyists is how much they follow up. So um, guys, such good info, like save those, save those, those three YouTubes that Brenda shared with us. And um, I'm going to tell Brenda to start doing that more, like share more of those stuff, all the training that you have, share it with us because um, it's really encouraging. Guys, I have talked a lot. I'm sorry. Does anybody else have stuff to share? <laughs> it's been great. Okay, good. I had so many notes. I was so excited, but I, I talk too much. I tell you what. I was jotting down some more notes. Oh, good. <laughs> good. I was just wondering um, what she recommended. I can't remember what, if she said anything or addressed anything. Maybe you have an idea mm -hmm. on if you've had an ambassador, they've been taking the products for a while. They never, um, well, in some cases, one of them shared a, a bit to begin with and then then they just kind of didn't anymore. I don't know if um, people told them no too much. That's probably what the case was. But anyway, then they still took them for quite a while, but eventually they just kind of fizzled. And I kept going back um, regularly and trying to pour into them and sprinkle, sprinkle throughout, but eventually they quit responding. And um, then they quit altogether and basically are kind of letting me know if you if I want Plexus stuff, I'll just let you know. Do you still, like maybe six months later or so, do you go back and check on them or ask them anything or do you just let it go? Um, what I have found with those people, I don't remember her addressing that specifically. Um, but what I've personally found with those people is I look for opportunities like, um, I, I choose my wording carefully and then I look for opportunities like, new product. And I'll just say, so if new product pops up or um, maybe a new way to take something that I didn't realize that made me think of them or something that pops up to make me think of them, I always check in. I check their Facebook page and make sure that like their mom didn't die or something horrible happened in their life. But then I go and check in on them and I'm like, um, uh, hey, I know you know, I know the timing hasn't been right for you to get back on Plexus or to try it, but this new product popped up and I thought about you and I just wanted to share no pressure from me. I just wanted to share that it's here. If you were curious about it, I'd love to send you a sample if you'd like to taste it or, Hey, I know in the past you really enjoyed, um, ProBio 5. Uh, I don't know if I ever shared with you, but there's vital biome, you know, like looking for ways to start up that conversation again and always 
I try to preface it with, hey, I know it wasn't good timing before. I'm just curious if it's better timing now because we do have this or I learned this or um, so something something of value that you're trying to share with them. Um, I also will say, uh, hey, uh, you know, and I'm trying to think of, of different things, but like, hey, I don't know if you have any leftover slim, but I heard that you could take it at night and it really helps with sleeping. I'm curious if you ever tried that, you know, try that again. So kind of like giving them some tips on how to take what they already have or adding value without asking them to order. Like, hey, do you have this left over? Or, um, hey, you know, there is this new product and I'm happy to send you a sample so you can taste it. Or so the kind of this idea where you're getting their brains thinking about the product again. I've done, I usually do that and just kind of pick my wording, wording well. But unfortunately, it just kind of comes down to they've got to make the choice for themselves. And it sounds like you've done all the right things. So rest assured in that. But it's just like, they're not, they're not doing it. Yeah, thank you. So, oh my goodness, it's 9.52. <laughs> I, I told Rhonda when we started, I was like 15, 20 minutes. And, I'm like, and here we are 40 minutes later. Um, but right before, before we leave, does anybody have any? Yeah, no, it's fine. It happens. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed it. It's been great. Good, good. Well, thank you guys for jumping on here. I'll post the recording so others can watch. And, um, and if you guys think of more tips, like, just post them in the comments so we can share with one another um, more things that maybe popped up from watching the videos. And um, I appreciate you guys. This has been such a great challenge. It's been a good uh, stretch for me again, that accountability. Um, I can't put things off. I've got to do it now. So uh, it's been really good. So I appreciate you guys. And hopefully we'll get to do another challenge again soon. But I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.